Okay, this is a video response to Fresh Fish's comment, and his comment asked, what should the officers have done? Uh, I'll first provide an example of what happened when I worked security at UC Santa Barbara. There was a, a movement of about, I'd say, 40 students who were camping out in the quad. They had tents, they had, you know, full campout equipment, and uh, they were protesting the fact that our university does business with like military contractors and uh, the military contractors of course you know make weapons and you know somehow they kill innocent children in Iraq and Afghanistan so they were protesting that a couple kids were going on a hunger strike and they were demanding that the university stop their business with uh, these governments or not these governments, these military weapons producers um, and uh, they camped out for like two months. Like, you know, the police, you know, we were told to check up on him. You know, especially the guys on hunger strike. But I'm pretty sure they said they were on hunger strike. But, uh, I mean, they, they weren't really that hungry, you know. I think it was... Anyway. Um, yeah, they weren't very committed. But, uh, so after about two months, eventually, um, I'm pretty sure the police just got diplomatic with them. And said, hey... What will you, you know, what do you need for you to leave? And they said, we want a meeting with the chancellor. So we gave them a meeting with the chancellor. They had a private meeting with the chancellor. Um, I'm not sure exactly what was discussed in the meeting, but uh, I'm pretty sure the chancellor ultimately said, hey, you know, these military contractors give all kinds of extra money to the schools, so then we can use that money to support things here at the school. Um, somehow the chancellor talked him down. I know the chancellor personally gave him like a thousand dollars each or something. Uh, so they felt like it was a victory, but really it wasn't. Um, so anyway, that's backstory. Now, what should the police of Davis have done? Uh, this is what I understand. There are many methods police officers can use to disperse a crowd. I mean, you're the police. Like, you kind of got everything at your disposal. Uh, definitely, in the terms of non-lethal uh, weapons, is of course appropriate. And uh, let's go through the arsenal of what the police have. Uh, for non-lethal weapons, they have pepper spray. And it's true, pepper spray cannot do permanent damage to you. Pepper spray just hurts like crazy. Uh, but it can't do any lasting damage. So, pepper spray is, is an, a choice, but as I mentioned in the earlier video, only with violent people who are violent to themselves or violent to others. Uh, so, okay. Pepper spray. There's police batons, but those could potentially be damaging. Um, water cannons, which I think are only for, like, really big crowds. But maybe water cannons could have been a choice at this UC Davis thing. Um, yeah, because that was... That's a good amount of kids that were there occupying. Anyway, um, and then there's also just general, like, a canine unit. Because, uh, trust me, as soon as a police dog is anywhere near someone, they will freak out. Like, I'm not saying, like, unleash the dogs to attack the kids. But I'm saying, like, if the dogs are on standby, and, you know, like, they're looking kind of mean, kids will disperse. Because, yeah, there's just a natural human tendency to be afraid of a, a dog that could potentially get you. So, I think the UC Davis police kind of acted in a rash manner. You know, they, they also, like, they deployed the full force and full riot gear. Like, I mean, geez. Like, where did all those police officers even come from? Like, the UC PD only has, like, ten officers. Like, they must have, you know, UC Davis must have called every officer in the entire Davis area and got some kind of big hippie busting powwow going on. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, th I, I can't say for sure because I'm not a trained police officer, but I just definitely know that at least the UC Santa Barbara Police Department would have chosen other options. Um, well, yeah, actually, there was this other time where this mob of, like, 40 kids occupied the highway. And, uh, yeah, and then we had to have police get in there and break them up. But really, we just, you know, got on a loudspeaker and got the officers assembled. 
Um, and we were just like, y'all got to leave or you're all getting arrested. And they all left. Uh, true that I think probably that same ultimatum was given to the UC Davis kids. And, you know, they decided to sit down, link arms. And, uh, you know, they, they probably knew they would eventually get arrested. I mean, I don't think anyone's complaining about them being arrested. What compl they're complaining about is the use of pepper spray. But, I mean, I, I have to actually think about the where the police are coming from here. I mean, I think they're in all the legal right uh, to pepper spray these kids. But it just comes down to the fact of what is the proper protocol for the use of pepper spray. Because if someone is, you know, resisting arrest, and those kids were resisting arrest. I mean, the police said, hey, if you don't leave, you're going to be arrested. And they said, nope, we're going to stay here. They are resisting. They are non-violently resisting. And I think that's where it comes into play. Because um, pepper spray is traditionally for violent resistors. But these were definitely non-violent resistors. Um, if, if I was in the, those police officers' situation, I would have pursued some kind of diplomatic means, uh, possibly water cannon use, uh, if it got to that. But I don't think it was at that point yet. Um, and also, I just would have threatened them. I would have threatened pepper spray. I would have threatened, you know, bringing the dogs on the sideline and scaring the kids. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I think just kind of getting in there and just gouging their faces and their eyes with pepper spray, that was, that was a lot. Uh, yeah, that's my two cents. Peace.